A waiter. Yes, sir. I'll have roast lamb, nice brown potatoes, and a cold bottle of Pat's Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. Pat's Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents... The Eddie Tanner Pat's Blue Ribbon Show! With guest stars, Cesar Romero. Our weekly guest, Simon Thor, Bert Gordon, the Mad Russian, the Sportsman, Cookie Fairchild's Orchestra, yours truly, Harry Bonzel, and starring your man, Friday, Eddie Cantor. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, while Cesar Romero's apartment is being redecorated, the handsome Latin movie star is staying at the home of the Cantors. Eddie says he doesn't like the idea of Caesar living with them, but Ida says... I think it's nice having a man around the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Eddie is pretty burned up over it all. In fact, this morning when I was having breakfast with him, he was saying... Harry, I'm sick about it. Ida makes such a fuss over that tall tamale just because he's in pictures. Oh. It's disgraceful. Oh. My own wife. Just because he's a movie star? Yesterday, she hung up a big picture of Cesar Romero. Well, what's disgraceful about that? She hung it right over my picture of Rita Hayward. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Eddie, what is in this big bowl on the breakfast table here? Special Mexican food for Cesar Romero. Special, <laughs> no, special. Really? All hot Latin dishes, huh? And how that guy eats. Really? In his orange juice, he squeezes three chili peppers. <laughs> in his oatmeal, he drops four enchiladas. And his coffee, his coffee is half and half. Half coffee and half Tabasco sauce. <laughs> I tell you, it's dangerous. Dangerous? Why? Yesterday, he, he cut and set fire to the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry, what? Since, since Caesar moved in with us, Ida's had a strange look in her eyes. I can't understand it. After all, what has Caesar Romero got that I haven't got? Well... Well, let me put it this way. What, what have I got that he hasn't got? Asthma, lumbago, and rheumatism. Harry, Not ha to mention fallen arches, wrinkles. Harry. Round shoulders, bloodshot eyes, sunken chest. Harry, will you stop? I've still got another page to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget it, will you? Oh, fooling, Eddie. You can't compare yourself with Cesar Romero. He's a terrific ladies' man. Yeah. Yesterday, I saw him walking in the park. He had seven women with him. Seven women? Seven women. Harry, I knew he was a wolf, but I didn't know he traveled with a pack. <laughs> Boy, the way that fella dresses. Wish I could afford those fancy clothes. By the way, Eddie, if you give me that raise, you'll probably... Harry, I... I told you about that raise. I told you. You'll get your raise in due time. Yeah, due time, he says. This is due time. My rent is due. My phone bill is due. <laughs> Gas bill, water bill, oh, grocery oh, bill. All right. Oh. Harry, will you, will you stop? Yeah, I still got another page to go. Oh. Forget your race, too. Well, I... Hey, Eddie, wait a minute. Cesar Romero, he's coming downstairs for breakfast. Yeah. Good morning, Eddie. Uh, sit down. Sit, sit down and eat these. I hate to admit it, but you look pretty good this morning. Well, thanks, Eddie. How do you look? Why don't you look at me and find out? Please, not while I'm eating. <laughs> Pour yourself some coffee. There's a big pot right over there. Say, that is a big pot. What's your name? Harry Von Hey! <laughs> wait, wait, just let me get this straight. Who's a big pot? You are, bud. Yeah, well, I just wanted to get it straight. <laughs> hey, Caesar, don't mind him. You know, last night when we were at the Macamba, yeah. Ida seemed to enjoy doing the samba with you. Maybe you could... Teach you to me, huh? Well, there's nothing to it. Huh? Now, when you dance the samba, you'll notice that the lady will first throw out her shoulders. Yeah. And then she throws out her hips. That's the lady. What part do I throw out? Well, Eddie, with your parts, I throw them all out. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, Caesar, I don't really need your help because the samba will come naturally to me. After all, I'm uh, letting myself much of magata, yeah. bablinta. <laughs> You, you are a Latin? Yeah. Why, Eddie, I happen to know that you were born in little young New York. Little old New York. It was young when you were born. <laughs> Listen, Caesar, I'll admit there's a difference in our ages, but it's very slight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't laugh, Harry. The, no. differ the difference between Caesar Romero's age and mine isn't great. It's great for Caesar Romero. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Eddie... If you want to make yourself more attractive to Ida, yeah. you ought to do things to bring out your good features. Yeah. Now, for instance, 
I always use a special preparation to bring out my hair. Your hair? Mm -hmm. What do you use to bring out your mustache? Tweezers. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Tweezers, tweezers. <laughs> Quiet, Harry. Uh, Caesar, your, your mustache is so neat, so trim. I must say you do a fine job with those tweezers. Oh, how, how did you become so expert at it? I used to pluck turkeys at the farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Flicker. <laughs> Frankly, Caesar, about your hair. I don't like the way it's all slicked down. It looks like you used glue on it. <laughs> now, listen, you. No cracks about my hair. This coiffure of mine has captured many a senorita. Oh. Once a girl runs her fingers through my hair, she never leaves me. How come? Well, confidentially, it is glue. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at now? <laughs> tweezers, tweezers. <laughs> Such a dope wants a ring. Say, Eddie, you know, to make Ida appreciate you more, I'm going to give you some good advice. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't lie to you, you know that. If there's one thing about me, I'm truthful. Yeah, you have a reputation. So, what is the advice? Well, I've learned that dealing with a woman is just like fishing. Yeah. Now, you've got to have a good line. Yeah. Keep yeah. building yourself up. Sure. Now, as soon as I meet a girl, right away I tell her she's lucky that she met a guy like me. Yeah. Because nowhere in the world could you find a finer, more handsome fellow than I am. Well, why do you have to, why do you have to tell her all that? Well, like I said, Eddie, if there's one thing about me, I'm truthful. <laughs> Harry, I want you to meet the South American, Phil Harris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, his doorbell. I'll get it, Eddie. It's probably Dinah's door. I'll be back on page 17. <laughs> Say, uh, Eddie, watch me demonstrate my technique with Dinah's door. Good morning, Eddie. I just came over to rehearse my song. Oh, but first, how about joining us here at the breakfast table, Dinah? Oh, Caesar, have you and Dinah Shaw met? No, I don't believe she's had the pleasure. <laughs> uh, Dinah, my little enchilada, something tells me we're going to be good friends. <laughs> Very good friends. <laughs> Would you mind backing up a little? Your fangs are chipping the table. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Dinah, uh, this really shouldn't be necessary, but I haven't told you who I am. Oh, I appreciate little things like that. <laughs> well, my name is... Oh, please, uh, I'd rather have you keep me in the dark. Well, I'd like that, too, but what do we do with Eddie? <laughs> you need quarter, I'll go to the movies. <laughs> Dinah, surely you recognize Cesar Romero. We saw his last picture together, remember? Gosh, I thought he was great in Julia, Mr. Hayes. Didn't you? I certainly did. I saw it 12 times. <laughs> Isn't Greer Garson wonderful in that picture? Oh, is she in it? Oh, yes. Now I remember seeing a beautiful figure in tight. But I kept thinking it was me. <laughs> Dinah, uh, Caesar only enjoys looking at himself. That's why it always takes him two hours to shave. Two hours? Yeah, for the first hour he looks at his razor. Then he looks in the mirror. Then he keeps mumbling, Oh, Caesar, it's a shame to lose any part of you. <laughs> Yes, I, I find it much quicker being shaved in a barber shop. Oh, Caesar, you shouldn't be shaved in a barber shop. I shouldn't? Oh, no. To me, you'd look much more natural being sliced than a delicatessen. <laughs> Say, Caesar, it's, uh, it's just like fishing, huh? All you need is a good line. Now, huh? patience, Eddie, patience. Watch her wilt when I pour on the old charm. Dinah, my sweet. I bow to your wit. Uh, I kiss your hand, madame. Oh, thank you. Oh, gee, would you mind kissing it again? And again? See what I mean, Eddie? Dinah, why do you want Caesar to keep kissing your hand? His mustache polishes my ring. <laughs> Caesar, when you get through, you can give me a shine. <laughs> Now, don't interrupt, Eddie. I want to talk to Miss Shaw. By the way, uh, it is Miss, isn't it? Oh, well, you can forget the Miss part. I can? <laughs> oh, thank you, Dinah. Oh, you can forget the Dinah part, too. You can just call me by my uh, pet name. I can? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what is your pet name? Mrs. George Montgomery. <laughs> Oh, uh, 
So you see, Eddie, it's just like fishing. Yeah. Even if you've got a good line, some days you can't catch anything. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's China, you go ahead and rehearse your song for the program, huh? Yes, now entertain the great Romero, the man who just won a popularity poll as Mexico's favorite actor. Caesar, you amaze me. After what happened last week, how can any man with a mustache still believe in a poll? <laughs> Sing, Dinah. Far away places, your new Columbia recording. Cookie Fair Child, if you please. Oh. With strings found in me away over the sea Close away places With the strings found in me Are calling, calling me Go into China Or maybe Everywhere. You hear it at Nevada's famous Lake Tahoe. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. You hear it at famous resorts in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. You hear it at hunting lodges way up in Maine. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. Yes, sir. You hear it everywhere. Finest beer served anywhere. Blended, splendid Pat Blue Ribbon beer. The century-old international favorite. The beer that always tastes exactly the same. Not too heavy. Not too light, but fresh, clean, and sparkling, with the real beer flavor coming through just the way you like it. Wherever you go all over America, you'll find that Pat's Blue Ribbon is served in distinguished homes. Homes like the Mrs. Winston Guests of Palm Beach, the Lawrence Melchior's of Beverly Hills, Jonathan Wainwright, hero of Corregidor, the Bob Hope, Gregory Peck, Gary Cooper's, and many others. Yes, you hear it everywhere. Pat's Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere. The reason? Thirty-three fine moons blended into one great beer. You hear it everywhere. Well, Cesar Romero, I see you're all packed and ready to shove off for Mexico to make a new picture. Yes, Eddie, you know, I wish you were coming with me. Yeah? Mexico is so colorful, so relaxing. Every afternoon you can see the laborers taking their siesta. There they are, lying flat on their backs in the street. You know, in Mexico we call them peons. In California we call them pedestrians. <laughs> Well, the first thing I'm going to do is watch the bullfight. In the picture I'm making, I play the matador, so I've got to fight a bull. A ladies' man like you fighting a bull? <laughs> well, why not? I've been practicing for three months. With a with a real bull? No. With Elsie, the cow. <laughs> what do you like that? Can't get him away from the girls. She's a... I can't understand why Daryl Zanna cast you as a bullfighter when he could have had me. I don't understand. Well, I think I'm more the type of those swashbuckling roles. 
You know, only last night I had a dream that I was the star of that picture of three musketeers. That I was alone on the desert island with my other two musketeers, Betty Grable and Virginia Mayo. <laughs> yes? Now, wait a minute. The three musketeers are all men. Listen, when I dream, I do my own casting. <laughs> you take care of Sergeant. <laughs> Eddie, you shouldn't envy me. You know, playing a bullfighter can be dangerous. Frankly, I'm a little worried about fighting a real bull. Then you'll never make a good party at all. A brave bullfighter likes to hear the roar of the bull. Mm. He doesn't run away. He steps right up to the bull, grabs it by the horn, squeezes it, and you hear... How do you do? <laughs> Imagine that face in television. <laughs> Watch him. This is Cesar Romero. In his next picture, he's going to fight a bull. Hmm, Jennifer, I can help him. Yes? I have been fighting since I was... I was knee-high to a grasshopper. You've been fighting bulls? No, grasshoppers. <laughs> grasshoppers? Ah, uh, Eddie, this man is silly. Mein dear Snider. <laughs> I will teach you all I know about bull fighting. And then, after you fight a bull, I will come into the arena to see you. And tell Caesar how good he was. No, I'll come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. <laughs> And I think you're a fake. So I'll have you know, I was the best bullfighter in all Mexico. No, no, not Mexico. No. It's Mexico. 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 One little by Cabernet. <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> what? What's very funny? He's just so in there. <laughs> hey, Russian. Yes, you are. I'll bet you were never inside a bull arena. That's uh, the bare-faced truth. <laughs> the date, July 10th, 1940. The place, Barcelona. <laughs> the arena is packed. I walk to the Royal Box and make my bow. Ten thousand people raise their voice and shout. Buna, buna, la baluna. What does that mean? Throw the bomb out. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, what happened in the bullfight, Russian? I was fascinated by a beautiful senorita. <laughs> He threw me a roll. The sensible came rushing at me. I made a grab with my bare hand. You grabbed the bull? No, the snorita. <laughs> what about the bull? Let him get his own <laughs> So what happened? The bull ran towards me. He lunged? Lunged. He looked like he didn't have breakfast. <laughs> Are you frightened? Not for long. About three years. <laughs> yes, yes. Go on. Suddenly, I stopped in my tracks. And the bull hit me a telling blow. Where did he hit you? I mean, tell him. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what finally happened? The bull snorted. Time to pull out my saw. The bull charged me. Time to pick up my bugle. Now, wait a minute. If the bull charged you, why did you pick up your bugle? Time to blow. <laughs> My dear Russian, with only a trumpet in your hand and the bull charging you, it's a wonder you were not killed. Impossible. Yes? You see? Yes? The bull and I was dressed as a cow. And when that bull cornered me, yes? I whistled. No. <laughs> no. So, so we've been going steady for the last six years. Oh, get away. Get out of here. <laughs> I tell you, Caesar, you must give up the idea of fighting the bull in that picture. Believe me, I'm your friend. You can make hundreds of pictures, but one slip with that bull, your whole career is finished. You're gone. You're gone. You know, Eddie, you've convinced me. Yeah? Bull fighting isn't for me. I'm going to tell Mr. Zanuck to find himself a new leading man. Yes. Why, when you think of the girls throughout the land who gaze at my picture and say, ain't he grand, it isn't fair for me to play these parts, to be killed by a bull and break so many hearts. <laughs> no, 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 it's for them I make this sacrifice. Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Susan. <laughs> I don't get this, Eddie. Why did you scare the daylights out of Caesar about making that picture? Don't you see, Harry? Now I can call up Daryl Zanuck and ask him to give the part to me. Oh, oh, oh. well, I'm glad anyway, Eddie. I'd hate to see anything happen to Caesar. He's such a handsome guy. Yeah. Gosh, fighting a bull, he could get killed, you know. Sure, he could get... You say Caesar could get killed? Yeah. 
What about me? Huh? What about me? Oh, well, on you, Rigor Martis would look good. <laughs> I'm scared, you know, I'm scared. Don't be frightened, don't hold your breath. When that bull sees you, he'll laugh himself to death. <laughs> Enter the arena, then loud and clear. Shout the praise of the ribbon beer. Gracious, Harry, I do agree. To tell the people about T-A-B-S-T. Half blue ribbon needs no praise. Please go buy it so I can get my ray. Oh, you hear it here, you hear it there. You keep on hearing it everywhere. In city home or county fair. The finest beer that there's anywhere. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. For football games or for big bull fights. Happy the top with steak and chop. And soon I'll drink it with a bull. Burger. A bull bug? Yes. Well, now, Eddie, I can see it now. The people in the stands are cheering. Yes. They drop their enchiladas yes. and hot tamales. And into the arena come the picador, the matador, the toreador, Pat Blue Ribbon Wait beer. a minute, wait a minute. And, and what is Pat Blue Ribbon doing in the ring with the toreador? Silly, that's the beer I adore. Oh, he's always got a man, sir. Beer I adore is Pat Blue Ribbon beer. Beer we adore. Here we adore. Now that I have left the bull to lap, let's drink a bottle of pap. And we're the ones to say, buy some today, if not today, tomorrow. Calling Daryl Sanitary. Yeah, well, hurry. Be quiet, Hello, 20th Century Fox. Oh, Daryl. This is Eddie Chandler. Cesar Romero just told me he won't play the bullfight in Mexican rendezvous. I don't know how he could be such a heel, but I'm willing to take a step. Now, Daryl, you know how I photograph those. So. What's that, Daryl? You'll sign me for the picture? Yes. I understand. Oh, Daryl, I just do not. Goodbye. Well, Eddie, congratulations. That's it. That's what? Didn't Daryl Zanuck hire you to play the bullfighter? No, Harry. The bull. Oh, my... <laughs> oh, Dinah. Yes, Mr. King. Cesar Romero was such a good sport tonight that not only do I want to thank 20th Century Fox producers of Snake Pit for his appearance, but I'd like to do something else. Something that... He'd appreciate something. How about money? So I thought Dinah and Caesar's honor. We sing some real Latin American tunes. Listen, I'll start off with. Hi, 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 hi. Have you ever danced in the tropics? In that hazy, lazy, like kind of crazy, like South American way. Hi, 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 hi. Have you ever kissed in the moonlight? In the grand and glorious, gay, notorious South American way. The Latin stream of love is like a dream of love. The Latin stream of love is in their veins. To buy a jewel for you, or find a jewel for you, or drive a mule for you across the plains. Hi, 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 hi. There is melody in their music. While the gauchos sing singing, come on and swing it South American way. Hi, hi. See, that? Isn't that better than giving him money? And wouldn't Cesar Romero part with all his dinero just to hear you sing? Bésame, bésame mucho. Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music divine. Never knew the thrill before. Who ever thought I'd be holding you close to me, whispering of you I adore? Dear one, if you should leave me, each little dream would take wing and my life would be. Forever 
and make all my dreams come true. And Dinah, Dinah. Yes, Eddie. Here's a fiery Latin rhythm that Gauss will sing on the pampas. The senoritas do the sinewy samba too. That every South American sings whenever he goes, join me, Dinah. <laughs> And then he'd row, 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 way up the river, she would row, row, row. A huggy gibber, she would kiss her now and then. She would tell him when they fool around and fool around and then they give the end. And he'd row, 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 a little further he would row, oh, 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 oh. And he'd drop both his oars, take a few more on toes, and then he'd row, row. Inquisitive or anything, but uh, row, row, row is a South American tune, a Latin rhythm, or look, Diana, rumba, or rumba, the something. people applauded, didn't they? They yeah. seemed to like it, didn't they? We had it left over from last week, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> oh, go away, Harris. I've got something serious to say to these ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I want to announce the greatest giveaway contest in the history of radio. A giveaway contest in which every listener must win the most valuable prize ever offered. Here's how it works. You, the listener, give away a gift to a wounded yank in a hospital who gave away his health to your season. And the prize you win, far greater than anything money can buy, is the priceless gratitude of those wounded heroes whose Christmas you will have made bright. Yes, tonight we start our fifth annual Give a Gift to a Yank Who Gave campaign, aided and abetted by the American Legion the veterans of foreign wars, the disabled American veterans, the AMBET, and the National Retail Dry Goods Association. When you're doing your Christmas shopping, just buy an extra gift. Leave it at the department store, and those veterans' organizations will see that it reaches the veterans' hospital in your community on Christmas Day. In this giveaway contest, ladies and gentlemen, you compete only with your heart. And if your heart is right, you're the winner. Give a gift to a Yank who gave. Good night. This program is brought to you by the Pat Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois. Written by Joe Quillen and Irving Ellenson. Produced and directed by Eddie Cantor and Manny Ostrom. And sent your way with the best wishes of the Pat Brew Ribbon Dealers from coast to coast.